Let us pray. Lord, speak, for we seek to listen for your voice in your word. Amen. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. As Lent comes into view as we get ready to prepare ourselves for Easter, here is the biblical challenge in front of us. Be perfect. I think many of us live in the push and pull of the struggle to live well this life. We are pushed to be perfect, but we are also pulled into lazy, apathetic rejections of perfection. And usually we live somewhere in between. But Matthew's Jesus in Matthew 5 tells us to be perfect. And I would like to suggest that for far too many of us, we feel the judgment of that statement. Because we know that we are not. There will always be good things left undone, poor choices sapping our resolve to do better. And is this what God wants for us? Guilt, shame, defeat? I think we need to look again at what this word perfect might mean. In the words of Jesus, in the mouth of Jesus, for people like me, for people like us. I think we need to look again at what perfect might mean for us and for others. There's an expression which I think I stole originally from a book that I think might have been called The Good Enough Mother, and that gave rise to a whole movement in parenting called Good Enough Parenting. I think the idea of good enough, and it's not something I've, I've it's not a series of books I've read, but I think the idea was that with everyone telling you what super parents should look like, and we've all met them, Actually, being the good enough parent might well be what is intended. Getting a balance back into our lives, making sure that we get to thrive and live as our families get to thrive and live. In a world building the stress and guilt and anxiety to be perfect, can we learn the perfection of being good enough? A revolution of love and balance was how the, uh, the great George Verwer used to call it. George Verwer was the most unbalanced man I ever had the pleasure to meet. An American evangelist, a mission leader. He founded Operation Mobilization. He had more ideas before breakfast than I've had breakfasts. He was a man driven for God. And I well remember him once saying in a, a meeting that by the grace of God, he had never had a breakdown. And then he paused. I, I, I think there was a real sort of genuineness to what he said next. But an awful lot of people who've worked around me have. And I want to repent of that. He came to, he, he, he loved to preach this idea of what we need in our world is a revolution. But it's a revolution of love and balance. 
And whatever perfection might be, I'm going to suggest that those words will still be included. That the perfection that God might be challenging us to is a perfection of love in a balanced life. Where we recognize the need to be the best us that we can be which might not fit other people's idea of perfection. In a world where we all want to do better, there are things that are wonderful and good that if not used wisely and spoken of carefully, can become a tyranny, can become a damage. Currently, one of my, um, my, my uh, thinkings around this is something that many of us treasure dearly. And that is what, in particularly in conservative evangelical circles, is called the quiet time. And we spend time each day in prayer and reflection upon the scriptures. Nothing wrong with that. Except I meet people who tell me they, they can't pray. I meet people who tell me that they find prayer difficult. I, I meet people who tell me that they feel as if prayer isn't something that they can do. And when I dig down, I often discover that what they mean is they've never been able to get on with the idea of the regular each day up first thing in the morning, quiet time with God. There's nothing wrong with praying that way. But there's also nothing that says that that is the only way to do it. And so you see how something good and right and proper can, if we are not careful, actually become a tyranny. Something that says you've got to do it this way. Otherwise, you're doing it wrong. Father John Chapman wrote a famous book on prayer in which he said, pray as you can, not as you can't. Now, is there a perfection in there? A perfection that says not your challenge is to pray like Billy Graham prayed but a perfection that says, what does a faithful prayer life look for you, John? I wonder, do we need to look again at this word, perfection? Be perfect, says Jesus in Matthew 5. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And what does God's perfection look like? I want to argue that it looks like the love of our loving God. And that's why this verse comes at the end of the verses it follows. That's why we are challenged in verse 38 to stay away from tit-for-tat retribution. That's why we are challenged in verse 39 to radical generosity. If someone asks this, give them much more. That's why we are challenged to love our enemies. A ridiculous thing to say. Except that the challenge is there in the recognition of the perfection of love. It's why we are challenged to pray for those who persecute us. This is the perfection of God. Generous love. And I believe that the love that God commands of us, the perfection that God commands of us begins in being generous in loving ourselves. 
It begins in challenging those notions that the word perfect usually draws up within us. Generous in loving ourselves, not riddled with guilt, shame, and anxiety because we are, we're not like the person we sit next to at church. We're not like that person we read about in the Christian literature. Perfection begins in a radical revolution of love and balance, which says, love yourself because God loves you. And loving yourself means there are times when you stop sacrificing for others and you need to protect yourself. You need to accept the love and generosity of others. You need to recognize that you are loved. You don't deserve to be treated like that. You don't need to live with the guilt and shame that others have put upon you. Perfection involves generosity to ourselves, as well as that generosity to others. That rejection of retribution and enmity. A love for others which dares to pray for our enemies, for those who persecute us. Be perfect, says Jesus. In the same way that God is perfect. Be perfect in love. For love wins. Amen. Let's take a few moments to be quiet.